We hope you enjoyed this exciting free preview. Unlock the world's largest library of European hunting content when you subscribe to My Outdoor TV. Get your 30-day free trial now with promo code YT30. Get ready. The guns of autumn ring out across the mountains of Spain. This is a deep dive into driven shooting and hunting. This is a look at some of the finest rifle shots in the world at the top of their game. This is Wild Boar Fever. Wild Boar Fever has traveled across the European continent to showcase driven boar hunting and the cultures and traditions surrounding the hunt. From the darkest forests in the farthest reaches of Eastern Europe to the hunting estates of the Loire Valley, Wild Boar Fever has sought to showcase the best of driven boar hunting. And now, we bring you Wild Boar Fever Spain with some new faces of the crew and some familiar ones as well. Spain has been a love of mine since I first visited, which was maybe 30 years ago. And the more I go, the more I love it. And I loved it from the beginning. Everything about the culture, everything about the traditions, the food, uh, the wines, the way they organize their shoots, um, it's just, it's got me. It's, I've just got the bug. Franz Albrecht Ettingen Spielberg needs no introduction to fans of the show. From his debut appearance in Wild Boar Fever more than a decade ago, audiences have marveled at his focus and skill in the high stand. If I think you were going to ask me, I could only hunt for the rest of my life in one particular country, and I would have to choose something that encompasses most types of hunting um, from uh, driven hunting, to birds, to I mean, small game, big game. I think Spain would be the one. It just, it just has everything that you could, could wish for as a European hunter. High praise from a man who spent countless hours in the high stand. And now, Franz Albrecht is joined by some new friends. Neil Davies from Hornady Manufacturing is a familiar face to fans of the show. We first met up with Neil in Croatia on Wild Boar Fever 9, and he joined us for a hunt on one of the grand old estates of France's Loire Valley in Wild Boar Fever 11. The European traditions and culture are a world away from Neil's home in Nebraska, but the bond that hunters share span borders and oceans. When you come over here and you participate in the hunting culture in Europe, you discover that it is Number one, it's a conservation tool to you know, control the excess population of game within a, an estate or a forest. But it's also a very social part of the hunting culture in Europe. Just like that, that opening day of deer season is in many states, well, a driven hunt's a big social gathering where you have lots of like-minded people to include some pageantry, uh, camaraderie, and a sporting experience that's really difficult to put into words until you participate with it yourself. Carl Gustav Schulenholwald is an avid hunter and crack shot on driven boar. He's hunted all over, but this is his first time to this Estancia and its surrounding countryside. There's a lot of these places in Spain, which are uh, old aristocratic families who uh, have turned what used to be either where they were living or let's say their um, country house into beautiful um, places where we can stay and, and have these uh, wonderful experiences. Spain has a rich tradition of hunting that goes back centuries. The mild climate and rich soils make for an abundance of wildlife. Stag, roebuck, various species of ibex, and the famed red leg partridge shoots are all avidly pursued. We are hunting the mountains of central Spain on an estate known as El Arenal. This is a long time hunting destination with the Guadiana River running directly through the property. It is without question a grand place and our hunters would find their greeting 
equally as grand. I think El Arenal is a classic, beautiful example of how a Spanish hunting finca or estate is set up. It has a beautiful house, usually set up for hunting and for its guests. Um, the different rooms to enjoy, uh, to sit together, the balconies, um, these type of rooms that we're in now with lots of trophies where you get prepared in the morning for hunting and, and you meet maybe straight after the hunt for a drink. Um, and usually the houses are set within the estate, which is amazing. So you never have to leave the estate to go hunting. You're never driving from one place to another. You're only spending time on the estate itself, which I find, compared to every other uh, country that I've been to, it's seldom to find something like that. In Spain, it's normality. This is what, what's normal. Up next, a look at Spain's rich hunting heritage. And it's time for the guns to come out of the slips. The horns of autumn are sounding. This is wild boar fever. Wild Boar Fever Spain is brought to you by Aimpoint, the future in sight. By Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by J.P. Sauer & Son, guns for generations. Spain holds a unique place in Europe. Compared to some of the more densely populated countries on the continent, Spain is still full of wide open vistas and wild lands. It's a huge country with relatively few people. Um, so a lot of the country is still wild land, I would say. And there's at least five times as many hunters in Spain as there are in Germany, but half of the population. So Everybody you meet more or less has some connection to hunting. And in terms of variety, you have every type of species that you can imagine. Wild boar fever is making its inaugural trip to Spain. Our hunting grounds, El Arenal, is a hilly 2,000 hectares estancia tucked into a bend of the Guadiana River, a draw for wildlife and hunters alike. So Spanish traditions are very different than, for example, German or Romanian or Hungarian in terms of starting times. In Germany, you would be getting up between five and six in the morning, and at very first light, you will be standing in a dark courtyard, getting ready for a day of hunting in mostly ice cold weather. And you would usually have either one drive that day or two, one in the morning or one in the afternoon. Um, in Spain, it's very different. In Spain, you will meet for breakfast between 9 and 10 in the morning. And the dogs will be released usually at around 12 o'clock. And the drive usually lasts, I would say, between three and four hours. A very civilized schedule indeed, and one that allows our hunters to settle into a nice meal after hours and hours of travel without the worry of a pre-dawn alarm. Enjoy a nice glass of Spanish wine, feast on local Spanish delicacies, but in the morning, more serious matters begin in earnest. Like any hunt, the first stop is a trip to the range for a chance to zero the rifles. After months of anticipation, our hunters finally don their gear and load their shell bags and gun slips and head off to see the property they will call home for the next few days. The hustle and bustle of travel and work responsibilities all become a distant memory as the hunters take in their surroundings. Pictures on a brochure offer a glimpse of what one can expect, but to stand at a shooting peg and scan the terrain is invaluable before the hunt begins. So I was using um, the Sauer 404, which I've known uh, very well since it came out. My bullets were the CX uh, Hornady, so it's a lead-free uh, cartridge. 
Uh, it's the first time I used it, and my optics were Aimpoint, which I've also been very familiar with, of course, for years um, since we started the series. Three of them make a good team and um, help me uh, very much in being able to shoot the odd bore or two. Done and dusted. Bravo, bravo, ole! <laughs> Coming up. Keep your head on a swivel. The drive is about to begin. The pomp and circumstance, the pageantry. This is hunting Spanish style. This is wild boar fever. It is morning at Arenal. The Spanish winds are calm and the Estancia is quiet. Soon, there will be a flurry of activity in every corner of the hacienda. But first, a traditional hunter's breakfast is served. So migas is a, another part of a Spanish Monteria that cannot be missed. It's a very heavy breakfast that will keep you, um, your hunger satisfied until the lunch, which will be much later in the afternoon. Migas is basically, it's breadcrumbs with garlic, different type of sausages, and usually one or two fried eggs. So it's a, it's a heavy breakfast, um, tastes amazingly good. And uh, you need to be careful not to overeat, uh, because otherwise, um, yeah, it's tough to stay awake. But um, yeah, it will keep your hunger satisfied until that very late lunch, um, the late afternoon. After a hearty breakfast, the estate is abuzz with activity. Hunters preparing their kit for the day of field. The beaters and dog handlers discussing how they hope to move the boar. Secretarios preparing the stands. The amount of people involved in a drive can be breathtaking until the group comes together for the most important part of any hunting day, the safety briefing. For me, safety briefing, every safety briefing is as important or more important than the first I ever heard in my life. So I try and keep very concentrated and, and really try and listen to, to what is being said. We are always shooting. Some of the plays are going to be placed on those cuts of the forest, so there is a decent space for shooting, but we really have to avoid shooting on the same line of the forest where you are going to be placed. In Spain, of course, there's more rocks, more stones, especially on the fire breaks, so you have to be even more aware um, because you will have ricochets. Um, there's just no way around it. So, and also because the drives are often longer than usual, you try and you have to try and concentrate and keep the safety issue in mind, of course, for a longer period of time. We have now just had the safety briefing about safe shooting. As they also mentioned, we do this quite a lot, but even though you always do it because you can never talk too much about safety, so um, I'm just looking for a, a wonderful day. A lot of um, fast bores, um, so I'm very excited. Well, here we are, it's the first day. We're getting uh, out to the hunting area for the first drive. We've shot the rifles, now it's time to put it all into action. The, the rain finally let up, so it looks like we should have a nice day to get this thing going. Quite a steep walk up from where we got dropped off up to our uh, stand. And we are standing on a small peak. Um, we have a neighbor over there. And then um, we also have a neighbor up the hill here. So we have uh, quite some neighbors we have to take care of, but should be fine.
Boar Fever Spain is brought to you by Aimpoint, the future in sight. By Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by J.P. Sauer & Son, guns for generations. The Wild Boar Fever team is back on the chase with an international group of hunters practiced, primed, and ready for the sound of approaching boar. With the hunters placed in their stands alongside a secretario to document the boar, the drive is underway. It's just so great to finally be back out. And now in Spain, which is one of my favorite countries to be in, and to experience these completely new traditions and new ways of doing things, I just feel very yeah, blessed to be able to do it and happy to be here. And it was supposed to be raining all day, and the weather has come through for us, so it could be better. We had um, secretarios on our stands that are, I would say they are, they're a, a helper to make sure um, all your equipment um, is being taken to the stand. They help hear and see game for you. They jot down how many shots you fired. They jot down uh, where the animals are. They help to um, take the animals um, out. Uh, if they run a little bit, uh, bring them out from the bushes. They help um, advise. For example, we, we had horses today, las mulas, that came and um, help drag out the boar. So they will stay at your stand usually once you have gone to lunch to help um, organize the everything afterwards. So getting the boar out, um, marking the trophies, um, etc. And it's a very common thing in, in Spain to be given a secretario when you're on, on, on your stand, especially when you're uh, foreign and you haven't, um, you haven't done it very much. Um, but also a lot of the Spaniards use them um, just because four eyes see more than two and it's great to have a little bit of help um, on the stand. You can just hear the dogs now being released on the other hillside. And it's a very different sound to the dogs that we have in Germany, for example, or the ones that are used in Romania and Hungary and also in France. So I'm looking forward to see uh, see these dogs, they're usually white in color, and some of them are very high in shoulder height. So it's a completely different way of driving uh, the game here. Um, and it, you know, this works for them, and we do it differently in Germany, but that's what I just love coming to these different countries and seeing the different type of drives they do and how they organize it. So, we already have the dogs, we've just come up, gotten ready. Now we hear the dogs, they're coming here. Okay, we can hear the dogs, so it's, it's obviously underway now. Let's stand by, see what happens. Um, my um, wonderful cameraman, Steen, and we get up in this tower, and I mean, it's close combat, and we only have, I would say, uh, lanes of, of shooting possibilities of where they, are. if they're gonna run full speed, you have maybe five seconds, you know? And we had a neighbor up there, and quite a lot of places where it was not safe to shoot, and literally three, four minutes after we started the drive, there was literally running boys everywhere, full speed. In the beginning, you have to sync with your cameraman and you have to make sure, you know, that uh, he's also where I am looking and so on and so forth. So we let a lot of boars go in the beginning just to kind of get into everything. I also had Neil up there, so I had to kind of take care of that as well, kind of getting my angles ready. And this is, you know, with a Montreal like this, experience really uh, comes in handy because when you get very excited and there's boars running everywhere, you tend to kind of lose your head and you forget about, let's say, everything you learned about safety and so on and so forth. So I was very uh, thankful that uh, it was not my first and I've been hunting a lot because 
this way you can still kind of keep focus and of course never shoot in the directions and always make sure that you have the bullet shot you need so you know that the bullet you're sending will go through the wild ball and then that's it. So it's a bit like snap shooting a game with the shotgun, if you would, if you were hunting rabbits or something like that, because they're obviously on the ground. But it's quick, it's fast. It's something that we don't typically associate with rifle shooting in the States anyways. But in a driven hunt, it's all on the move, and you've got to get accustomed to shooting a rifle on the move. And you've got to do it quickly. And you've got to understand the mechanics and how to execute the reloading with, of the firearm in a flash because that first shot may hit the boar, but your job is to dispatch it, so you've got to reload and shoot again to make sure that you dispatch that animal. Shoot number two. 